Hello everyone and welcome to Operation Dread Factor. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway here to unveil everything that's coming in Year 8 Season 2 of Rainbow Six Siege. We've got a new operator, new map rework, and a lot more to cover. But first, here's Creative Director Alexander Karpazes with an overview of the season and some roadmap updates. Welcome to Operation Dread Factor. This is introducing a new operator, Fenrir, hailing from Sweden, who's joining the Red Hammer squad. He's bringing with him the idea of fear to the battlefield. This is a mechanic that we've been working on for a long time, and we finally made it work. And we're happy to introduce him to the rest of the operators. On top of this, we have a big, long overdue map rework for Consulate. We hope you enjoy it. And we're bringing much, much more. We're bringing balancing changes, quality of life changes, and accessibility changes to make the game that much more enjoyable to play, including Permanent Arcade being released this season for everyone to enjoy. As with last year, we want to be fully transparent with what we do with the roadmap and any changes that we make. And these changes are actually informed by you, your voice and your feedback. That means this season, we're delaying the Frost rework to season three, so that we can focus on the priorities that you mentioned to us when we announced this initial roadmap. That means Grimm will be getting a buff this season, as well as the observation blocker being moved up to this season, season two as well. For Frost, we want to make sure that you can play the Lab TS this season with those changes. There will be a dedicated spot on our Six Fix where you can give us feedback for Frost. Fear is coming to Rainbow Six Siege. And I'm not talking about 20 seconds left on the clock, diffuser in hand, what do you do, fear. I'm talking about this. This is what it looks like when an attacker is caught in the radius of Fenrir's FNAT dreadmines. Are you afraid yet? You should be. Fenrir brings a whole new way to undermine the attacker's advances. One that's unlike anything we've seen yet in Siege. Next, you'll hear from concept artist Sunshine Kim about the design and creative vision of this unique operator. And then Director of Gameplay Design Jeremy Carvon and Game Designer Dominic Clement will elaborate on the features that make Fenrir someone to be feared. Fenrir is designed by, once again, our character concept artist NJ Chutai, who previously worked on Green. Fenrir looks dangerous, somewhat frightening, but it's not reckless or evil. Since he is a scientist and a trained soldier at the same time, we really wanted to capture those two elements in the visual design. We explored uh, light urban combat outfits for his general aesthetics and something more advanced high-tech equipment that could be a focal point of his design. In this case, his neck color uh, slash mask that gives him immunity to his own gadget. Keeping rest of the design more grounded, we allow certain room for fantasy uh, on his gadget that can really show the character he can belong uh, both combat and lab environment at the same time. So when our team started to work on Fenrir, we found interesting information about military scientists conducting uh, researches around uh, psychochemicals. They were looking for ways to fight enemies with cloud of gas that can impair the brain and send a subject into a state of delirium. So Fenrir's device is a diffuser of psychochemicals. When it's activated, the metallic casing opens. When it detects the presence of hostile, a gas is sprayed. When opponents are under the influence of this chemical, their brain are affected, their perceptions are clouded, and their field of view are obstructed with hallucinations. Because of the nature of this character, we build this scary looking device Fenrir works with chemicals, so the casing is corroded, creating this skull that became part of his identity. When it triggers, two glowing eyes are watching you while you are slowly sinking into the obscure universe of Fenrir. So Fenrir joins Rainbow as the mastermind of the defense. He's a unique trap operator that can truly adapt and redirect his own utility to the ever-changing flow of around. So Fenrir brings the FNAP mine. It's a throwable, sticky gadget that can be deployed pretty much everywhere. 
Once it's deployed and it's activated, it can be triggered by an attacker that walks in its line of sight. Once it's triggered, the mine will release a toxin cloud. Everyone standing at it will be affected by the effect, which we call the fear effect. In short, the fear effect is essentially a, a curtain, an opaque bubble around you that limits your visibility range to a few meters. Past that, it's complete darkness. So when the round starts, Fenrir has all of his gadgets in his pocket. And when they're deployed, they're basically inert. They don't do anything and they're armored. So they can't be destroyed by bullets. Uh, they can only be destroyed by explosives. Aside from being there and looking mean, they really don't do anything. That is until Fenrir activates them with one of his the three codes. He has three codes and five gadgets. So he has less codes than actual gadgets, so he needs to be mindful of which one he's going to activate and which one he will remain armored. Because once they're activated, they open up and they're no longer bulletproof. So they're very vulnerable to bullets, lasers, and obviously explosives. Once they're open up, they mean business, and it means that it can be triggered by attackers and affect them. So when you play as Fenrir, your goal is to survive as long as possible. So we made sure to give him a kit that will hopefully allow you to do so. If we look at the primary weapons, you have two options. The first one is the MP7. A classic, really powerful SMG, great for close, mid, and even long range uh, encounters. So the second option is the SASG-12, which is a very strong, powerful shotgun that can deal a lot of damage in close range. Perfect to pair with the gadget, which essentially limits the visibility of the, uh, the attackers, so you can really get close and personal with this weapon and deal a lot of damage. Secondary weapon, we have the Bailiff. It's a great secondary weapon that creates a lot of destruction for a pistol. Uh, whether you pick the SMG or the shotgun, you'll be sure to have uh, a tool in your arsenal to reshape the map during the prep phase and set up your, your gadget the way you really want it. For secondary gadgets, we went for gadgets that will really synergize well with the operator's main ability. Uh, the first one is barbed wires. The f knot will reduce the visibility and the barbed wire will slow them down. His other option in terms of secondary gadget is the bulletproof cam. Again, a great synergy with the gadgets because you can use the bulletproof cam to keep watchful eye on your FNAT and you can also use the bulletproof EMPs to disable any pesky attacker drone that might be coming in to destroy your gadgets. So Fenrir is a very flexible operator. It can be very useful for new players as much as for very experienced players. Um, for new players, if you don't want to deal with having to manage and jungle with the, all the codes, you can just deploy your gadgets, activate them, and play them like a regular uh, trap operator. If you want to be a bit more advanced and kind of trick the attack, you can really uh, juggle with the codes, activate your gadgets when they need to be activated, deactivate them to protect them, do this dance of the mastermind kind of controlling where the, the gadgets are most effective and affect as many attackers as you can. Keeping up with the synergy between the operators and the gadgets, you have a lot of synergies with other operators. So like Melusi and Clash uh, can combine their slowdown effect with the FNAT, they'll have their visibility reduced and also they'll be slowed down so they might be stuck in this effect a bit longer uh, thanks to that. Combining it with other operators like Thorn means that you can kind of catch these attackers in their moment of panic and hopefully deal them a lot of damage with these, uh, with these gadgets. Another group of operators that are very useful with Fenrir is the intel gathering operators like Valkyrie, like Pulse, like Solis. Uh, they're all very useful operators that can really collect as much intel as they can and share this intel with Fenrir so Fenrir can be more uh, aware of which one of his gadget needs to be activated in order to be the most effective. Operators that can be a bit more sneaky could potentially get a bit closer to the victims and give them a good scare, like, well, Cavera. So if you have a Fenrir on the other team, uh, you have a couple options in terms of counter. The first one is the classic combo of IQ and Thatcher that can be uh, brought to deal with these FNAT. So Finca is another very interesting counter. She won't completely remove the effect, but with her nano boost, she'll be able to kind of reduce the effectiveness of the, uh, of the fear effect. Uh, giving you more breathing room and more room to see around you and find hopefully cover to be safe. An interesting counter that you can bring is Mountain. Mountain can trigger them and provide cover for the rest of the team to come in and destroy the FNAT that have been triggered. Um, since he has the shield, 
Um, the visibility reduction is not the end of the world. He's still protected. And finally, you have Twitch and Zero that can be brought to hunt down all the activated FNAT and zap them with their lasers. We can't wait to see the strategies and kind of big brain plays that uh, will come up with Fenrir. Uh, he's really an operator that can play with uh, collecting information and removing information from the attackers. So we can't wait to see players run around activating, deactivating their, their FNAT and scaring attackers uh, throughout the next season. We've seen your excitement about the upcoming map rework for Consulate. And now we want to give you more details on the renovations and updated bomb sites. And by we, I mean team lead world Jeremy Dowsett. Consulate is one of our original maps. It's eight years old. It was old technology. It needed to be brought up to a level that we expect from our maps. New destruction, new walls, everything's up to the new 2.0 standard. So we can actually iterate upon it and we can actually fix bugs and issues much, much easier. We've gone top floor all the way down and even out to the spawn points. This map is a very, what we'd call a heavy rework. It's a massive overhaul of everything from the ground up exterior in everything's been touched it's gonna feel the same but there are a few surprises and a few tweaks everyone knew that there was a problem with consulate with being spawn peaked or run out on quite a lot so we've gone through and we've looked at all of the lines of sights from the building to the spawns and we've made it more comfortable for the attackers to actually approach and actually get into the building. So what we've done is we've looked at all of the lines of sights, i.e. all of the windows, all of the doors, anything that looks towards the spawn. And in certain cases, we've actually either put a blocker on the window, say some scaffolding, or we've actually removed the window or blocked it permanently. So anyone that was used to looking out towards garage and getting a cheeky angle, that angle's not there anymore. If you want a spawn peak, you're gonna to have to work an awful lot harder for it. There's a new set of stairs, yellow stairs, that go all the way up, which aids the navigation, and especially if you need to switch between floors. The biggest change that players will notice is the exterior wall on the balcony. So you can actually hold the balcony and actually play, play with the ebb and flow of the attack and defense. You've got a chance to get in on the balcony now. A lot of things have changed on the first floor. A lot of walls have moved. Some new thematics, there's a new thing called Exposition, which is actually a bomb site. So you have Exposition Piano as the bomb site on the first floor. Entrance lobbies changed. Spiral stairs, you're still gonna recognize it. It's the same, but refreshed. A lot more cover and a lot more ways to actually approach the bomb site. It's less open. It plays much nicer than it did before. Everyone loves to hate garage. The smoke plant was everything. Every time you watch this map get played in Pro League, when it was in Pro League or in Ranked, you know what's gonna go down. They're gonna plant behind the truck they're gonna smoke and then they're just gonna hold it all the way out on the exterior and you're not gonna be able to counter them. Now you actually have to enter through a new room to get into garage to the bomb site to actually be able to plant. This means you can't hold it from the outside so you have to enter the building. Same thing if you're attacking from server side. There were lots of lines of sight and they would hold on a really long angle. We've looked at the angles and we've cut them all down. The flow's a little bit different. The bombs are in different places. Not only is the garage changed with the big new entrance and the doorway through, there's a doorway to the side of it now that goes to yellow stairs. It's always nerve wracking for the team who did an exceptional job. It looks amazing, the artists were great, the lighting looks great. I think the player's gonna love it. So like Nighthaven, you can't ban Consulate. We want the players to be able to experience the new map, the new navigation and the hard work of the team. In Siege, all it takes is one bullet. And to help you make each bullet count, the shooting range is continuing to evolve. Associate Game Director Christopher Budgen is here to tell you more about the new features, including a destructible surprise. We've been very happy and pleased with the reception of the shooting range and our constant quality of life updates. Now, an Operation Dread Factor, our Shanghai team is bringing our largest update yet. The aiming lane allows players to practice through play. Whether they want to customize the movement and speed of different targets from the shooting range, so you can test recoil and damage directly in an end game situation. 
You can create customized setups if you want to adjust the speed, movement, or the distance options of different sets of targets. Now you can master your reticle management in a real life situation, but without having to leave the shooting range. What we really want to do is allow players to get their hands on their favorite weapons and their customized loadout and put that directly to use so they can train and improve their skills in the shooting range. While we were really happy to bring the aiming lane for Season 2, we're actually bringing one extra thing as well. We're bringing a destructible wall into the damage lane. Destruction is really important in Siege, and so allowing players to test how much destruction a weapon will do versus the damage that it creates is a new variable that players can choose to determine their ultimate loadout. Practice creating rotations or making lines of sight, or even check what the damage fall off is when you're using your weapons through a soft wall. We're really happy to have destruction right there in the shooting range. From golden guns to headshots only, arcade game modes are a fun way to flex your siege skills. And in Operation Dread Factor, we're introducing the permanent arcade playlist. For the full breakdown, Let's go to game designer Robert Cole. We are super excited to finally bring you the new permanent arcade playlist and you can get your hands on it coming in Season 2. We wanted to give a place for players to actually play and enjoy all these arcade game modes that we've released throughout the years. But we also felt like all these game modes deserve a place to be permanent inside the game. And we will release with a list of 5 arcades. So now you will be able to, from the menu, jump directly into a queue for all these crazy and fun arcade game modes. Or you can even go to Custom Match and create your own lobbies with your own friends. We are releasing with arcades like Golden Gun, in which your only weapon is the Golden Desert Eagle. Or even Headshot Only, a game mode in which the only way to kill your opponent is actually with a headshot. Or even Snipers Only, a game mode in which everyone is using Kali's sniper rifle. We're also moving TDM, or Team Deathmatch, back into the arcade playlist, because we feel like it fits better in here. And if you were paying attention, I mentioned five arcade game modes. And that's because we're taking the chance to release a brand new arcade called Free For All, in which, you probably guessed it, it's you versus everybody else. No teams, pure chaos. You will jump directly into a map versus nine other people, and you will have to fight your way to victory. So now players will be able to warm up and have fun without restrictions in these alternative ways of playing Rainbow Six, without actually worrying whether or not they will be removed from the game. So yeah. Have fun with your friends in this new arcade playlist. A new gadget is coming in Operation Dread Factor. You got a glimpse of it during the 6th Invitational, and now it's time to see, or not see, what's up with the Observation Blocker. Technical designer Sergi Ledesma from our Barcelona studio is here to teach you all about it and share a balancing update for Grim. Intel Gathering is one of the core pillars of the Siege experience. We want to reinforce this gameplay by giving defenders more tools to deny information to the attacking team. That's why this season we're releasing this new secondary gadget, the Observation Blocker. This gadget, once deployed on the ground, creates a digital barrier that blocks vision through attackers' observation tools, forcing them to drone more aggressively and giving more opportunities to defenders to destroy those drones. Defenders choosing this secondary gadget will start with 300 pockets, so they will be able to cover large portions of the map. When it comes to synergies, the gadget can be used in combination with operators such as Kait, Maestro or Melusi to hide valuable pieces of utility. For example, with Maestro, you're going to be able to hide your evil eyes behind an observation blocker and gather information and shoot with a camera without getting your gadget exposed to drones. It can also be used to defend strong positions. You could, for instance, place a deployable shield, a couple of ADSs on the wall, lay some traps and hide the entire setup behind an observation blocker. Attackers won't know what threats are hidden behind this gadget, so they will have to either risk their drones, find a way to destroy the gadget, or pick themselves without enough information to win the gunfight. The gadget can be destroyed by bullets, explosions, or even be hacked by Brava, so defenders will have to find safe positions for it to be useful during the round. With the gadget in play, attackers will have to drone smarter and with more precision to gather the information they need to win the round. The addition of this new secondary gadget will create new gameplay interactions in the Intel Gathering experience, and will also give the defenders more flexibility when it comes to assembling their team compositions. Grim hasn't received as much playtime as we would like. We think the main reason is how hard it is to apply the effect onto the defenders. We want to buff him, to make his gadget more reliable and impactful. And to do so, we will release two updates, the first one coming this season, and the second one later during the year. 
From now on, the deployment sequence of his gadget will be much faster. So as soon as the projectile sticks to a surface, the piece will be released shortly after. We are also increasing his area of effect, so the piece will stick to more defenders. Additionally, we are doubling the duration of the piece, so the area will be denied for much longer. We are also improving his loadout. He's going to be receiving the bailiff as a secondary weapon and the hard bridge edge as a secondary gadget. These new tools of destruction will help him create new lines of sight for his gadget to be useful. This set of changes will make him more reliable, effective and versatile. We have more changes under investigation for this operator, so you can expect more improvements during the year. It's time for an accessibility update for console players. New controller layouts are coming. Associate producer Jane Gonchar from our Keep Studio has more. As you may know, we want to level up playing field for PC and console players. And new additional controller layouts are important stepping stones on the way to full controller customization. We have already several of them in the game, but the new one we are introducing a step above and beyond, centered around tackling some difficulties that might cause discomfort for players when using the controller. Players who felt that some actions were taking a toll of their hands might find this feature is a way to increase comfort. Other players might find a way to play game differently. Working with current layouts already helped us shape the final vision for full controller remapping. We will continue to iterate on the feedback we gather to ensure that final product will meet the highest industry standard and provide our console players the best experience possible. Next up, we've got a new feature coming to match replay. The free camera option will give you more flexibility over how you view and show off your replays. Creative Director Alexander Carpazas is back with the full update. Free camera for match replay is coming to Siege, and this is a new perspective of spectating matches. This breaks from the top-down view or the first-person view of the game. Now you have complete freedom to move around the map as a camera to inspect things that you never saw before and to see strategies from a whole new light. The goal of free cam is to provide players with the tools necessary to review their match to review the strategy, no matter where you are, you have the freedom to move around that map and inspect those details that you missed before. This means that the next level of free cam in a future update will be an update to the HUD, so you can also hide it as well. This would be a fantastic tool for creating content. This means that you can set up the camera that you want, the capture and performance that you want, so that you can create that amazing video that you've always dreamed about creating inside of Siege. In Season 2, we're bringing a quality of life update too for everybody who enjoys playing squads. We're providing squads the opportunity to vote when the squad's ready to jump into the next fight, and the squad leader will instantly be able to move them into that next matchmaking phase straight from the after action report. This isn't the only quality of life improvement we're doing in this season. We spoke at the SI about interactions with gadgets and improving that, and we're delivering with the first step, which is the diffuser pickup, making it more generous and more intuitive in order to pick up that gadget and providing the option to players whether or not they want automatic pickup or a prompt to pick it up. The future means that we'll be bringing these improvements to other gadgets as well. And like we promised at SI, the idea of putting down your gadget, picking it up, and even throwing it will be on the roadmap for future updates. Operation Dread Factor is coming to the season test server next week. Get a first look at Fenrir, his fear-inspiring gadget, and the reworked consulate map. And remember, whether you're on the test server or in the live game, reporting issues you encounter to R6Fix will get you a chance to earn some extra rewards. That's all for our show today. Thanks for watching.